for your blessing. I know you've been hurting deep down inside. Well, let me encourage you. It's going to be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Just keep on believing. You keep holding on. So get ready for your blessing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yes, He does. Uh, God's got a blessing. Got a blessing. With, your With your name on it. God's got a blessing. Oh, God's, got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Yes, He does. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With your name on it. 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 Make it personal. With my name on it. With my name on it. With my name on it. With your name on it. With your name. Why don't you stand with us as we go into our next song? I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you. Yes. <laughs> 
I'm chasing after you. Are you chasing? I'm praising my way. Come on, put those hands up. Just to be closer to you. I'm chasing after you. Hey, hey, hey. I'm praising my way through. Just to be close. I'm praising my way through Just to be close I'm chasing after you I'm chasing after you How many of you need it? Happy Mother's Day I'm praising Until then, we're going to let you know right now, because there's something about that name. Something about that name. Something about the name Jesus. Yeah. Something about the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. It's yeah. the sweetest name. I know. I know. I love that name Jesus. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh. I love that oh, name. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. It's the sweetest name. It is the sweetest name. I know. Listen, some people, 
Some people say I'm crazy, and I can't explain. Look, the power that I feel. Hallelujah. When I speak your name. Look at here. It's just like fire. Shut up all this mumbo. Oh, yeah. And when that Holy Ghost gets to moving on the inside, oh, it just won't leave me alone. Hey, something about that name. Something yeah. about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. Something about the name Jesus. You see, it's the sweetest name. It it's is the sweetest the sweet I know how oh, how I love, I love the name him. Jesus. I love him. I love him. Oh, how I love the name Jesus. Oh, yeah. It is the sweetest name. Listen at this. Like this. this, is like this. Shh. I know. Sweeter than honey. Yeah. <laughs> From the honeycomb. And when that spirit gets to move it on the Oh, God. It just won't leave no, me no, alone. no, 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 no. At the name of Jesus, every knee, every knee shall bow. But you know what? You don't have to wait until tomorrow. You can cut your hands, jump oh, your feet, praise him right now. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something, Something about, about the name yeah, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Something about the name oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord. He's the it sweet. He's the sweet. He's so sweet. Name. Name. sweet. Oh, taste and see. Know. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is oh, good. How I love He's the good Jesus. in the morning for breakfast. He's good oh, in the how food. I love the name Jesus. He's good in the midnight hour. It when you cry yourself to sleep. Hey, hey. Name. It's the sweetest name I, I know. know. I can't think of
everybody. Ooh. Oh yeah, take it home, take it home. Yeah, right now, right here. Bless him. Give him praise today. He's worthy. God worthy. your people in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Friends, if you turn quickly, stand and turn very quickly to Romans, the 15th chapter, verse number 4. Romans 15, verse number 4. Let us read it together. Thank you very much. Out of that uh, scripture you just read, I want to talk about today, preach about today, sing about today, and whatever else you want to call for the day. We can get along. The, 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 the writer said that, that uh, for what, whatever was written in earliest times, my friends, was written for our instructions so that through perseverance and encouragement of the scripture, we might have Hope. Let me take my time. I will never finish. Very seldom I finish a sermon when I preach. But friends, I pray to God today that you not only are in this building, but you are in the presence of God. And in his presence, your main interest is to listen. Not to look around, see what somebody is doing, what they're wearing, it's not your business. It is, are you listening to God? Now let me, and, and, and many of you are in the academical world, let me say something that would help you. You already know it, maybe you don't practice it. You can never tell anybody you know something and you don't do it. You don't know it. You can't tell, I, I, I had to do this more than once. I had to give uh, certain groups of people a test. I did two workshops here in Sacramento for the school system. All teachers. You hear what I said? 10% of those teachers uh, were sleeping, taking a nap. Then it was time for to ask questions. They couldn't answer. Then when it's time to mark them presence or absent, sorry, Brother Springers, I had to mark some of them absent because they was there but their mind was somewhere else at the dining table, wherever. Listen, when God's word goes forth, and if it's not, then God didn't tell the truth. He expects for us to listen. That's what changes you. When you listen, listen. I'll give you a good, good uh, example. It'd probably be funny to some of you, but, but it was real. My... Uh, it was uh, 
five boys and two girls that live. Two boys died. One died in my arm, bounced him up and down, 11 months old. Took me to, I was 19 years old to overcome it. One day we was going to uh, an activity and it cost some money. So I had saved my money and I had a brother like some of you. Every time he got a nickel, he spent it. So he, I said to him, I said, well, I'll tell you what you do. Go and tell mama to look in her money chest and give you some. She got money on her money chest. And he said, what do you mean money? I said, she turns her back and put her hand in her bosom. Now, some of y'all know that because you're still doing it. And I said, that's her money chest. And tell her to give you some money. And so he, will, he listened. He was said, Mama said, I know. She said, no, I don't have no money for that. She said, I, he said, I know you have some money because it's in your bosom, in your chest. She said, where you get that from? And he, he didn't tell her. She slapped almost his teeth out. <laughs> and if he wasn't listening, because she was left-handed, if he wasn't listening, he listened from then on. Then he come outside, he was going to jump on me because you got me in trouble. Now, I, I, I understand what you were thinking, what you were saying. When he, 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 he attacked me, and I was standing in a brace, and I went after him. He listened to me, but he didn't listen to what was right. If some of you, if some of you mothers in here, or no, if some, if some mothers in this country and in here, they would have had listened to their training. They would have been able to accomplish much more and faster than listening to other people. When I got married, I told you this before, more than once. When I got married, I said, not too far from where we live, was a, they had a, a, University of the clinic, and they had in that place classes. One of the classes they had in there to teach young couples how to raise kids. I just said, I want to be married a month, and I said to my late wife, I said, let us take these classes. And she said, well, I'll help my nephews and nieces, and she went on and on, and which was fine. I said, I did the same thing. But I have never had any of my own. So my intention was to have eight kids. I don't care what you say. <laughs> and the reason we didn't have them because she almost died with two. So what happened, we went for 27 weeks every Thursday night for three hours to teach us how to deal with children when you have children. Let me go back over here. They taught us everything you can name. So when, when my first child was born, she had to stay in the hospital longer, and my wife had to stay in the hospital longer. So when she came home, my late wife was not able to really take care of the child. So I had to get up at night, get up in the morning, five o'clock, I'd rather four o'clock, fix breakfast, brethren. For her because she couldn't cook, brethren. She was sick. Then I had to take care of the baby and then take the baby to someone else to take care of it. When I hear a man say to me, I don't like to cook, I've said to him what I said to you, his wife ought to say, I don't like to cook either. <laughs> there is no such thing that a man can't learn how to cook, Amen. you learn how to drive. You, you, you studied that book until you got your license. You took the test two and three times. Say amen right over here. Amen. So God brings families together and he teaches us how to get along. You know why so many families are fighting each other? It has nothing to do with the devil. They are the devil. 
Let's move it here. Romans 15 and 1 says, Now, my friend, listen to what he says. We who are strong ought to bear the weakness of those without strength and not please ourselves. I went to two groups of people yesterday. They are so engulfed with what that thing that you all believe in. Um, they're so engulfed with entitlement. You're not entitled but two things to thank the Lord that you're still alive. Number one. And number two, act like you're alive. I'm entitled to something. Entitled to what? Let me give you this story. This man, this man uh, was a member, Arby, this was a man was a member of this church. I, I uh, you know him, but I don't want to name him. He, uh, he came to my home. He's dead now. Came to my home, and he said, I would tithe, Pastor. But my wife raised so much king until I can't tithe. And I said, well, don't you work every day? He said, I work every day, and sometimes six days a week. And your wife tells you you can't tithe and she doesn't work? I said, you the one that's weak, not her. You don't have to say amen what I'm saying. If my wife would have told me I couldn't tie to the God that saved me, the God that's going to take me to heaven, the God's going to bless me to work every day, and I can't give him what he asked me for, I wouldn't have said anything to my wife. When she came home the next day, I would have been gone. Because I want peace. I'm 155.9% believe in tithing. And I tithe. I have tied my last dime. Didn't have a penny left. But before next Friday, hey, he dropped me something. You have to learn how to get along with yourself. Some of y'all can't get along with yourself. But there's a God who want to help you. Listen careful here. Listen careful. Romans 15 and 3 says, For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, my friend, the reproaches of those who, my friends, reach out will be received. Paul says, for even Christ did not please himself, but he pleased his father. And, and, and I hear some people say, well, well this is Mother's Day. So you brought some comment about time. If you wouldn't have no mother, you didn't have no, no God. I think the last time I remember, uh, uh, I don't know nothing about you, but I was born, I didn't come from a woman. I came through a woman. I came from God. Through the woman. Maybe you missed it. If it had not been for God coming from him, I wouldn't have came through my mother. <laughs> you missed it. I owe my mother everything. No, I owe her everything on earth. But I owe God everything for her not dumping me. If I'd have came in the 21st century, I might not would have made it. But oh, we can get along. Now we have moved one step higher. Person, the family you came out of, in God's family, you're one step higher. And so you say, but it's difficult for me to get along. Then what? are you doing with the Holy Spirit that lives in you? Quit talking about something said to me. If you are in the Word, on your knees praying, or if you're standing up praying, 
That spirit called the Holy Spirit, he will speak to you, he will guide you, he will talk to you, he will help you. I don't care what other folks say. I talked to three people Friday, one of you was with me, and three people down I was cross asking them, they knew me, I didn't know them. And they approached me, and so when they got through, I said, what church are you all in? And one of them said, I don't go to church. I said, I said you, do you believe in the... She said, no, I don't believe in anything. And I said, well, that sounds good, but it's not the truth. I said, you believe in yourself, otherwise you wouldn't be here today. The other one said, I would go, but I don't like it. The other one said, I go every Sunday. I said, these are your friends. And I had to catch myself. Because the next thing I was going to say, you need to be careful. You, you can't run with the devil and sing with the angels. There is no such thing. You can run with people all you want to who are not saved, and you are saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Spirit. If you keep running with them, you're going to start acting like them. It's catching. Now, some of y'all right in here can say amen. I know you don't want to do that, but I can say it for you. You cannot run with the devil and be holy 24 hours. not going to work. Let's keep on. I'm, I'm on the quote in Paul. Paul says, that's what, this is what Paul says, Romans 15 and 7, therefore accept one another. Accept one another. Quit putting yourself in God's place. Accept somebody if they don't dress like you. Accept them because you didn't always dress like that. And you got your hair looking good with about five different styles on it. You need to accept people don't have no hair. You keep on living, you're going to get you two or three layers. Accept one another just as Christ also accepted us to the glory of God. Now, let, 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 let me say something, person. Let me, let me spring and go over there, move quickly, you all, move quickly. Let me tell you, show you all something. You all move on this side. Christ accepted us, and he accepted you. Now, I'm just using these people as a demonstration. This man here, I won't name him, then you won't attach him. This man here just said, he was an alcoholic. Was, I said. Just said this man here was a gamble and a fighter. Just said this man here killed somebody. Just said this man here beat his wife and his children. Now he came to grips that yes, I was an alcoholic, but when I reached out to God, he caught me by my hand and he saved me. Now, if he saved him, he says, no devil in hell can pluck him out of God's hand. Now, you need to leave him alone because he used to be an alcoholic. He was an alcoholic he used to be. He's no longer an alcoholic now. He's a saint. Yes. Yes. I wish I had the time today. And he has this man here. You what? A gambler. Throw all his money away. Him and his wife fighting all the time. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit touched him. He laid his cards and dice down. Came to Jesus just as he was. Wear it. And now God has saved him. He's saved full of the Holy Ghost. Leave him alone. Forget about what he used to be. God is no used to be God. He's a right now God. You were what? He killed somebody. Now, here is where the rubber meets the road. 
Every one of you in here, if you're above 10, have killed somebody. You didn't shoot them, you didn't hang them. But you have killed their influence because you worked on their character. You're not innocent. And God has forgiven you and God has forgiven him. Don't talk about, you know, 20 years ago, remember he killed that man? What about that woman you killed two weeks ago? Putting her down, talking about her. And you what, brother? He's a wife beater. Now, sister, now, brothers and sisters, some of you have been beaten by somebody. Maybe not necessarily with your hand, but with his mouth. And God forgave you. Why don't you forgive him and leave him alone? That's how you get along with people. You get along because you think about what you used to be. Man said to me at the funeral Friday, he said, he said, aren't you jittery? You stick to the facts. I said, yes. I'm not only jittery. I'm scared, not afraid. But I said, you know what? There's a line been drawn where I'm fearful. The enemy can only come so far. And when he gets too close, to my angel raises up. And he said, well, I started to do it, but I changed my mind. No, he didn't. The power of God in the angel changed his mind. We can get along. Thank you. Church, it's not the devil. Quit blaming the devil for everything you are messing up. It's you. Somebody hurt your feelings. I'm not going back to St. Paul no more. They're hurting my feelings. You can't live in America without your feelings being hurt sometimes. But if they hurt your feelings, that's the devil pointing them out to you. Then what you want to do is to pray for them. You could, many of you could not ever become a pastor. You couldn't. Because you couldn't handle it. I have been called everything but a snake. And I'm still saying, why should I worry? Or why should I feel discouraged? And I can sing it because they can only make me feel discouraged temporarily. And then when I go back to my king, the Holy Spirit will say, I got your back and your front. But you got to believe it. Amen. Amen. I repeat, we can get along. Amen. I was in the office. If you'd have been there, then you'd have got it. I was in the office some few years ago, and the man came in to see me and got mad. He didn't get angry, he got mad. And he, he pushed me. I, 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 I had to be back back. I said, now, if you touch me again, I'm going to jail. He didn't get it because he was an Afro-American. A Negro would have got it. He didn't get it. And so he said, you going to jail? I said, oh, yes. Well, why do you want to go to jail? I said, just touch me again, and I'm going. He didn't get it. He's going to touch me in my office, on my territory, and then he's going to look like he's a bully. You see, don't go in nobody's house think you're going to get away. You might not get away. Uh, he, he wasn't going to get away. I was thinking while he's touching me. I would have reached back like I'm going to reach for his hand, and when he reached for me, I would have got him right on this side. You cannot be saved, and God will not help you. You can't be. Let's move back here. So we can get along. This is Mother's Day. Mothers, you and your daughters can get along. If you can't, 
Pray for her and don't let her live with you. Now, now let, me, let, 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 let me get your attention here. You, when you got a 22-year-old daughter, 25-year-old, you have done your job if you raise her right. You only owe her now is to be nice, friendly, and pray for her and let her be crazy. You live in my house and you're my son and my daughter and you work, you're going to pay some money. Because you, 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 well, that's an upkeep. You're wearing out my rug. You're wearing out my chairs. You're eating my food and making me pay a high electric bill. And you don't want to pay. You grow and I do whatever you want to do, but you got to go. But I love my child. No, you don't. No, you don't. When you love somebody, you try to help them, but they don't want no help, you let them alone. And you go home and pray for them. Pray hard. That's how you get along with people. Amen. Amen. My son, when he got a job, he said, he said, Dad, I know I got to give you some money. He said, he said I only make this amount. So how much shall I give you? I said, well, you give me 35%. You make a dollar, I get 35 cents out of it. He said, well, Dad, I'm going to be short. I said, you knew that when you got grown. <laughs> I, can't, I can't take care of you now. You're grown. If he'd been in college, I'd have did everything plus. But now you're going to work and you don't want to go, you're going to be responsible. The reason many church people don't get along with each other it has nothing to do with the devil. It's the devil still working in you. He works in you. This is to the brothers. I was someplace recently and a young lady came up to me asking some questions. Very beautiful young woman. Young woman, the only bad thing about it, she was two-thirds dressed. <laughs> I am not dating no woman only two-thirds dressed. Amen. She got to be all the way dressed. Because I'm the only one to know anything about her. Now she's exposed to Trump's team. No. Whatever God give you, whatever God gave you, cover it up. Okay, let's move on. So, so when we look at, oh, one will suppress the sex by smoking it away, sleeping it away, or even walking it away. Listen, my friend to some quotes taken from some of the world's most powerful, my friends, prominent and popular people. Let's take your friend Oprah. Oprah was quoted as saying, I discovered that I didn't feel worthy of anything and suddenly not worthy of love. Unless I was accomplishing something I suddenly realized I had never felt that I could be loved just for being me. Now, I never felt that. When I was growing up, I felt nobody was better than me. They didn't look no better. They didn't have no more. They just was different in their um, upcoming or upbringing. Now, Oprah wouldn't say that. She discovered that now her money, her popularity, keeps her in the spotlight. But don't tell her I told you. But soon and very soon, she got to leave it all. How much did she, left? Did she leave? She left it all. 
Now, friends, unless you are hooked up with God, you're going to leave it all. But when this earthly house is off, I already have another building not made with the hands of men. I'm going to leave this earthly stuff, but I'm going where the wicked would cease from troubling me and the weary would be at rest. I'm going somewhere. I'm not just dying. I'm going somewhere. And I don't have to worry about taking anything with me because all I have to do is just give him praise. I'm not going to run nothing. That's God. Friends, listen carefully. The tennis players, the baseball stars, making me and living like they are rich in their brains. Their brains are not functioning. How can a man make $150 million playing baseball and he retired and broke? Broke. You know why? Didn't listen. He didn't listen. Money is spiritual. I know you talk about me now. Money is spiritual. Read it. He says, give me mine first. If you bless me first, I see to it that you won't have no headaches. Friends, how many windows, doors in your house? Count them. He said, I do what for you? Bless it well. You won't be able to do what? And your mistake that you made, you think that God is going to drop you some money from the sky or go buy you a car. Not so. The Spirit will lead you clock where to go and what to do. But you got to listen to Him. He'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing into your house. A lot of y'all living in, sleeping in houses now, you didn't buy them. I know what you said. I saved my money. No, you didn't. You saved what he told you to do. Now you own it and you don't want to give him any praise. Amen. Amen. I was in the Virgin Islands and on my knees. The lady came in to clean the room and she says, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't stop praying. I got louder. The reason I was praying in the Virgin Island, I was given, we was given a trip there for two weeks. Free. Not a dime we had to pay. And some spending money. And you telling me I'm not gonna be able to just eating and watching that water, that salt water on one side and the regular water on you that I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about look where I come from. I came a long way. That's because of the Holy Spirit. Mothers, you have the most powerful job on earth. Y'all are beginning to get together now. You're going to upset politicians. Women runs this country. And the brothers say, you might as well say amen because they're still running it. I don't care how smart a man is, behind the scene, that woman somewhere or that wife is dictating to him. And if he want to stay with her, he going to listen to something. Ask Ronald Reagan. Ask them. So mother, since you have such a powerful position, don't surrender it. Teach your kids your grandkids, your nieces and your nephew, read what I'm reading, just what I'm reading now. Read it and ask them if they understand it. If they said no, go over it again. And let me say this on my way to heaven. If your daughter error in life or your son, it's your blood, you must get along and love them. They don't have to stay with you. You cannot love God 
and hate the one that you raise. There is no such thing. And the more you love them, the more God will love you. Some of the best people that I've ever known made some bad mistakes. But they're still humans. A few years ago, when I was putting my arm around a man who used to be an alcoholic, some of us have been working with him, he's done well. And the church person said to me, you can't hang with him. He's an alcoholic. Come here, Clark. When they said that, I was standing talking to him. When they said that, I said, but he's a good man. They looked at me like I had lost my mind. Mm. He's a good, that's a good man I don't see. But if I work with him and show him how I love him, he might show me that good man someday. Amen. 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 That's what love will do for you. Yes, sir. Amen. But Pastor, I'm a mother and you don't know what my kids have done to me. But one thing I do know is what you've done to God. You have not been loving and kind to God all your life. You can look like an angel today, but you haven't been no angel all your life. We are not writing the Bible for ourselves. And we are making everything okay for us but not according to what God says. Break the word, Pastor. Amen. 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 Our mothers went to lunch Wednesday. I got a call from the place talking about how nice the ladies were. It can't be nice if there's no God in them. To be a mother is special, gracious, loving, and kind. Don't give that up. And in closing, ladies, I don't care what you see. You see a man, he looks good, he's driving good. Find out how long he's been driving good. And find out if that's his natural look of somebody painting him up. Find, take, it, take, it takes time to find out about a brother. And then sometimes you fail. But there is a God that will help you. I don't care what goes down. He'll help you. Amen. Amen young lady who had a position in the state of California, made a lot of money. And she said some years ago, said, Pastor Williams, I think I have found him. I said, then leave him alone. <laughs> she said, what you mean leave him alone? I said, because he should have found you. <laughs> you found him. He is looking for a home. He's tired of roaming. Amen. But Pastor, I love him. I wrote nine checks this week. One to smudge and love didn't pay it. One to PG&E and love didn't think about it. One to the cleaner and I got to take some more next week. Love is good for you as an individual, but you need more than that to guide your life. The last time I heard what I need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Mothers, you are blessed to have people like us, boys like us. You can surrender your power if you want to but you will never get it back. Never. And they got some, you, you don't know about this, but they got some brothers is out now waiting till you get out of church <laughs> so they can see. And they'll say, go to lunch with you. Oh, I would pay, but I left my wallet at home. <laughs> and then you said this, 
I would buy you lunch, but I left my money at home. <laughs> you are a powerhouse, and you are a blessing to us. Don't sell it or give it away. Amen. 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 God has some good men, good ones. You just have to open your eyes. He doesn't have to be Ralph Evans. You don't know him. Handsome, plenty of money, but no sense or no brains. The best looking car looks that I ever bought was a Mercury. Three weeks, it broke down. And then they didn't have no parts, didn't make them anymore. It broke down. Looks will change. I said looks will change. But God will never change. I've seen the lightning Flashing, I've heard the thunder roll. I felt the trying to conquer my soul, but. Telling me Look what happened Look what happened Never Nobody can tell you that but Jesus Oh no come today while the Spirit is speaking to your hearts? Will you say yes to Him? While He speaks to your hearts, say yes to Him. No. Will you come today? Will you come today? No.